Science estimates that life on Earth began around 6,000 million years ago with the first living being swimming in a primeval sea. Since then, evolution has created an extraordinary variety of plant and animal species, an amazing spectrum of very different forms and designs which nonetheless all obey certain basic rules. All the animals and plants we can see today are victors in the struggle for survival, a struggle in which many others have been left by the wayside. There is not a single one, however insignificant it may seem, that is not a master at something. The game of life has absolute unbending rules, the laws that govern natural selection. Every change introduced by the genes is carefully examined to determine whether this particular variation makes the species more or less competitive. In time, the evolutionary lines that don't work will die out, while those that introduce improvements to the original model pass on these advantages to their descendants and so survive. As simple and as complicated as that. However, everything comes at a price. This anteater is the best at what he does, but he would be incapable of eating anything else. He now depends completely on ants and termites. The snakes adapted by losing their legs, but in exchange they gained a series of advantages that have made them a highly successful group. Once a given path is chosen, there is no going back, and often a simple change in the surroundings can leave entire lineages of animals stuck in a dead end. The cheetah is the fastest, but it had to reduce the size of its claws and now it would be unable to kill a buffalo. Curiously, some small snakes could because they invented powerful venoms. In this arms race, only one branch chose to invest all its energies in a single organ, the creative brain. Over time, with its capacity to invent, it learned to imitate the weapons of all the other animals and came to rule over the earth. Now this same mental capacity that brought success runs the risk of turning into its worst nightmare. Only one animal on the entire earth is capable of conquering paradise, making it his home, and then turning it into hell. Sixty million years ago, at the start of the tertiary era, the world climate was uniformly warm with abundant rain. In those conditions, everything was occupied by rainforests and the most highly evolved plants called anthophytes or seed-bearing plants obtained energy from the sun in the presence of plentiful water. The anthophytes developed an extremely ingenious system of reproduction they invented flowers of appealing colors, full of sweet nectar to attract the small animals whose bodies would then transport the pollen from one plant to another. The system was an evolutionary success, but some 60 million years later, the climate began to change. The continents moved, and in many places around the world, temperatures dropped. There was less rainfall and the forest shrank, leaving large open spaces. This was the opportunity for another humbler and more backward line of plants, Lagraminiae, commonly known as pasture or grass. In addition, land covered in grass can feed 90% more herbivorous animals than the same surface area occupied by forest. Not only are they not harmed by being eaten, it in fact makes them grow even more. Their reserves are well guarded beneath the ground and will repeatedly grow again, even from the part above the surface is devoured a hundred times. 
In this way, the savannas, prairies, and steppes occupied enormous spaces on all the continents, feeding legions of herbivorous animals. Various lineages of mammals eagerly took up the challenge to make the most of the abundant grass. For a mammal, vegetable matter is difficult to digest, and the majority of what is consumed simply goes to waste. This means they are forced to eat large quantities throughout the day. But one of the branches, that of the bovines, deer, and antelopes, managed to house in their stomach certain bacteria that help them to ferment the grass and so make more efficient use of this food. They are what are known as the ruminants. In the parallel world of Australia, the marsupial version of the grass eater is the kangaroo. Kangaroos demonstrate that evolution seeks similar solutions to the same problems. They are an example of adaptive convergence. They have bacteria in their stomachs and chew the cud like the ruminants, but are at the opposite end of the genealogical tree from the mammals. Their system of moving by jumping saves energy in short stretches, but it is not suitable for the long migrations the ruminants of the rest of the world have to undertake. That is why all others use four legs, all except one, man.